Hey, THLers. Welcome to a wonderful week one draft series. We got uh, a couple of great players here. We got uh, Niji Boston and Super Chicken joining me tonight to uh, do some casting. How are you guys doing? I'm great. Doing good. Yeah. I did to, uh, it's almost turning into a full all Canadian stream. Um, the only person that's uh, ruining our fun is Skirt Reynolds, being from the U.S. That's <laughs> the way it should be. That's right. <laughs> the only time Canada gets to dominate the, the U.S. is <laughs> on stream, so it's good. Yeah. So, um, players have uh, have already got their bands on, so they had, uh, they got uh, what is it? Skirt Reynolds banning uh, Demon Hunter, while Diamond bans Warlock. Um, I'm going to throw the deck lists up here if you guys want to chat about that, and then we'll get rolling. Yeah, it kind of looks like Diamond brought uh, something of a, a hunter target um, with the Fell DH, Quest Lock, uh, uh, Agro Druid, and Librum Paladin. I think it, like a lineup like this kind of made a lot of sense for him. You know, Hunter's been a really strong and popular deck lately, so brings bringing a lineup that's that's uh, targeting Hunter, I think, is a pretty good idea. Hunter, just I mean, just being an aggro deck in general, I think by nature is a bit easier to target than some other popular decks. So I think Skirt definitely has his uh, work cut out for him here, trying to get a win. Yeah, I agree with you. The Hunter is the big thing in this matchup. Diamond definitely is looking to counter that, so we'll see if the Hunter can get through. Smart bring, because five seeds often bring some aggro decks, so in general, it was a pretty good lineup. Yeah. Um, are you surprised at all by the, the double aggro druid bring? I think, um, it, I mean, yeah. it's obviously fallen off in popularity recently. But it definitely has its matchup still, you know, still being fairly strong into, uh, you know, aggro quest warrior, which is still really popular, still strong, as we've seen, like, into face hunter, which is, like, why uh, Diamond brought it. Yeah, I am a little surprised, because it's been falling off recently. I can definitely see why Diamond brought it, because of his strategy. And, I mean, it's still, yeah, like you said, a good deck, so... It's not that surprising, but wasn't that popular in the draft series. No, not not super popular. Um, but yeah, I think Hunter, you know, it looks unfavored in this matchup, but it has been one of the best performing decks in the draft series so far, um, with Demon Hunter being the other class that's been performing really, really well. So I think... I think some of these matchups that, you know, used to be worse for the Hunter have improved a lot lately, notably like the Druid and the Paladin. Um, I think a card like uh, Ramming Mount really improves the Paladin matchup a lot, being able to make value trades without losing any health in the early to mid game is really useful. And also just stuff like uh, being more aggressive on board with Arcane Anomaly uh, and Wound Prey, I think, help a lot against Paladin, just being able to take the board as early as possible and get get some chip damage in. And yeah. that also works for like the Token Druid matchup as well. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely a way that uh, Skirt's going to be able to snowball the matchup. Just trying to stick a one-drop and then start buffing it up and getting free trades and snowballing his advantage. Also interesting, both players have Warlock, but Diamond brought the Fatigue Warlock and Skirt brought the Handlock. So if we see a Warlock mirror, I believe the Fatigue Lock is slightly favored in the mirror. Yeah, the Handlock from Skirt was banned out, I believe. Oh, it was? I think I think that was... Yeah, yeah you, you are right, yeah. So we're only going to see one Warlock this match. Won't have to worry about it. Diamond was calling it his uh, his fun lock, his fun warlock. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I haven't really played it since uh, like since the balance patch, or I guess since it was originally nerfed uh, with the the mithril rod nerf. Yeah, neither have I, but it definitely looks pretty good 
for Diamond, especially in this matchup. Yeah, I guess like notable cards in there, the the one of Mana Feeder Panthera, which you see, you know, two of sometimes, one of sometimes, and then the one of Unstable Shadow Blast as well. It's the mm-hmm. other uh, singleton card in the list. Um, other than that, pretty standard stuff. Not really much to note there. The Druid lists uh, differ a bit as well. Um, Diamond going for the Vibrant Squirrels and the one of Wriggling Horror, whereas Skirt went for the Jerry Rig Carpenter with Sow the Soil Package. I think yeah. in the mirror, the Squirrels are maybe a bit better. Jerry Rig is maybe a bit slow, not very well statted for uh, to face an aggro deck. Yeah, I agree with you there. Also, Skirt has two Neophytes and two Ratchet Preveteers and Warrior. I'm pretty sure this is Zhao Ti's Master Store list. It might yeah, be this is different, I but think I think this it is, is the uh, same. I think this is card for card, the same list that Zhao Ti won the Master Store with, yeah? Mm. Yep. All right. Players are ready to go. A few guys are ready to go. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So for our spectators, we're going to have um, Skirt Reynolds is going to be at the bottom of the screen, or first to spectate for our casters here. Uh, and Diamond's going to be at the top of the screen. Uh, just be aware, we will be, if the Druid matchup happens, there will be some uh, some crazy mule disconnect, reconnect action going on. So don't fret. <laughs> Blizzard uh, doesn't need to fix the friends list, and it doesn't need to fix the mule either. So Yeah, mule... Bug's been around for like three and a half months. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs to fix it? <laughs> so I'll, I'll let the players know they could start, but uh, go in here. Maybe you guys uh, take a look at the stats. You want to comment on how the stats are going there overall for the uh, draft series? Oh, oh, like, uh, yeah, this is somewhat important for standings implications. I think Diamond's team, uh, or Mad, it is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think, yeah, your team, Neji, I think you guys are guaranteed above them in the standings, but if Skirt wins, I think his team gets in through the bye? Yeah, or, so or... they're four points behind us right now in our division, so if they sweep, then they'll tie us, but we still have the head-to-head, so we'll still be ahead. Yeah. But with the four points, it would put them above every other second-place team, which would give them the wild card spot. So. It's win and in, and if you lose, I'm pretty sure they can't make it. Or if, maybe with two points, they'll tie um, your team. Okay. Yeah, it does so get I'm a little sure bit more complicated. There. So if it's a 3-1 or 3-0 for Diamond, that's it. And if not, we'll have to see what happens. Okay. Players are jumping in. So. For a lesson. All right, yeah, so Diamond ran the quest lock first, which, I mean, makes a lot of sense. I think his uh, quest lock is favored into pretty much all of Skirt's decks. Yep. <laughs> Interested as to kind of what you keep here, though. Um... Touch of the uh, Nathrazim is pretty good at removing a lot of the early drops. It doesn't. You probably won't be getting the uh, the health regen from it early if you play it on uh, one or two. But I think it it's definitely worth a consideration since um, Razor Maid Battle Guard is two health now. Yeah, I think that's the big thing because it does kill the Battle Guard. I think it's worth the keep. I like this yeah. mulligan actually. Tossing the rod is. A good thing to do. It's really slow versus Druid. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point to note. I think a lot of people would just kind of, you know, keep Rod without thinking just because it's such a core card in the deck and so so synergistic with, like, all your draw cards. But, um, yeah, the fact that it's four mana now, it, it's really just going to sit in your hand and do nothing for a lot of... Yeah. And we'll have to see if Skirt decides to tempo the Razor Man. Looks like he's going to go for the Druid of the Reef with Adorable, which I like. Save the two drop for a taunt. 
Yeah, you have a play right now. I don't think there's any reason to that you need to drop the the razor man early. Yeah. Yeah, I also like uh, getting in a life tap now um, rather than a bit later. Yeah, agreed. Not under a lot of pressure here. We really want to find Soul Ren. Or wait, no, actually, we're not running them this deck. Uh, yeah. So in that case, we're it. looking for the Grimoire, right? Yeah, Grimoire of Sacrifice. Yeah. That's going to be our AoE. See if Skirt plays around the Grimoire here by not playing the other 1-1s. One yeah, it's kind of interesting. You know, you might want to save these tokens for a composting, but at the same time, you you also have a play on four anyways. Um, Product Panther's not um, obviously not amazing if there's no minion to attack into, but it's still fine. I don't think it's really a card that's winning or losing you the matchup a lot of the time. Yeah, for sure. This does give Skirt a target for the pa Arc Panther. Yeah, he's able to curve out pretty nicely here. And, you know, the fact that he didn't get a taunt early meant he held the Razor Maid Battle Garden hand. And now with Oracle, he could get, you know, a Grey Bower or a Teacher's Pet uh, down on six and get two of them. Yep, exactly. Which is really hard for this deck to remove without Moarg and Grimoire stuff. Yeah, and getting a little bit scary here, you know. <laughs> you're, you're getting low. kind of low. <laughs> I mean, you, you have to kill this Perk Panther here, right? You're taking seven from it if you don't. Yeah, you it definitely just, looks like a Drain Soul. You are just... Could save the Drain Soul for Tamsin. You go back up. If you play Blast on the 2-4, you go up to 12. Yeah, I mean, if we're targeting the 2-4 here with Blast, Diamond's definitely thinking of Drain Soul in the 4-3. Yeah, not going to leave that out. Definitely, definitely wants to save it for next turn with with Tamsin, the Drain Soul. So I think, yeah, we're going to see a Tour Guide plus Armor Vendor here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely down for this. Uh, yeah, this is a good line. Having Tamsin without a, sh like, a good Shadow Removal spell in hand feels pretty bad. Yeah. If we dumped both the removals there, I think we're in a really, really rough spot. But now having the Drain Soul. We'll see. Skirt does go face, so Diamond's going to be able to clean up the 4-3 and the 2-4 here with Tamps and Drain Soul. And I believe get a Life Tap in. Zero this turn, yeah. Yeah, he'll go back to 13 with this. Just leave two things on board. Yep. Yeah, Skirt now. Kinda needing a strong top deck, or he's probably just gonna be out of the game. Um, either, you know, a 5 cost taunt, or maybe a composting would be decent here. Yeah. I mean, with Diamond's current hand, even just a taunt minion to play with Oracle and Razor main battle guard would really flood the board, and Diamond doesn't actually have an answer right now. Yeah, I guess any taunt would kind of work here. We'll see if Diamond decides to tap. Might have been wanting to save it to combo with the Mana Feeder for cheap next turn. Yeah, he also... Oh, there's the... There's the uh, the other good top deck. <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> it's definitely just yeah, Marsul plus Arbor. Yeah, He's and I think very maybe surprised the tap... if we don't kill the Tamsin. I think maybe the tap was uh, or holding the tap was being worried about. Um, I guess so. The soil, so so the soil Arbor would have killed them anyways. So I don't know if there was a, a one damage and like an exact one or two damage plus Arbor up that, that killed him. Yeah. So at this point, it's going to be hard for Diamond to clear here. Going to need to find 
I think it's just Grimoire, right? Yeah, need... but Grimoire does two, so you need to hit more Grimoire off this backfire. Or the tap as well. But that yeah. will Although if you're tapping, leave you dead. <laughs> you are just dead. Yeah. So Diamond unable to find a way to clear the board. Not having access to Soul Rend in this deck. And not finding Grimoire. Is going to leave him dead on board. Yeah, I mean... Skirt got... I mean, given Diamond's hand, he got the best possible top deck in Arbor up. And I think, uh... I think he played played it pretty well. You know, holding back on the tokens was probably a pretty good idea. Um, you know, playing around the initial threat of Grimoire, and then once you've seen that he doesn't have it, you can play more into it. Yeah, for sure. And again, holding back that Razor main with the Oracle. So if it, this board does get cleared, you can go right back in on the board. That's that's a pretty huge win for the token druid. Um, I'd say that was another deck that wasn't super favored into diamonds lineup. I think I would say it's probably still a good matchup into paladin. Mm -hmm. But you know, playing into warlock was. I would say that's probably a bad matchup. I, I don't really remember what the matchup is like. I haven't played it too much, but I have to imagine it's not great for the druid. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's slightly Warlock favored. But we do see the Hunter finally coming out here, so... See if Skirt can get that through. That is the big question mark for this series. Yeah, pretty good start, too. Um, well, for Skirt, that is. No removal on Diamond side, which is a bit scary. I wonder if... Yeah. I, I wonder if... I, if Playing an armor vendor on one to challenge the board is ever better. I think I would have liked to see armor vendor and then quest armor vendor on two. Try and yeah. contest. It feel maybe feels a bit worse because you're at like you're not tapping on two, so it might make it a bit more awkward spending your mana over the next couple of turns. Yeah. At this point, I'm pretty sure I'd like to see a tap. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you're not playing. Vendor on one, you're not playing it on two either. Yeah, you're just but, using it to gain some HP later yeah, on. I do like the, the consistency in the play then. Just, uh, you know, sticking yeah. to the line. Agreed. Likely we'll see... Um... Well, honestly, there are a few decisions kinda, here. I do think this is kind of interesting. You know, you can fit in a hero power next turn if you have if you quick shot this turn, right? You have yeah. The, the anomaly up to four health. You can fit in guardian og merchant plus hero power. Um, yeah. It probably does a better job of protecting it overall. Um, two health plus divine shield is definitely stickier than four health. I'd say. Mm hmm. Does leave Skirt with a bit of an awkward curve here, though. So that quick yeah. shot's never going to be drawing cards until way later because of this Barak in hand. Yeah, I would. I mean, given the hand, you might even say that like this quick shot will never draw a card this game. Yeah, I, it probably would never draw a card. <laughs> See if Skirt wants to play around. Um... Like trade plus touch on his anomaly by playing quick shot, or just decides to hero power and weave that in while you have it available to you. Well, I mean, you could also just quick shot face too, right? Yeah, um, yeah. By quick shot face, you prevent the touch. Yeah, you also protect from touch, and then you you kind of set up a a piercing shot next turn by leaving the the armor vendor on board. Yeah, exactly. I, I think Diamond's probably going to go for Tamsin Touch here anyways, so you have a Piercing Shot target no matter what. Yep. I don't think... Yeah, I don't even think there's a play that's even close to as good. 
No, I agree. Setting up the rod is definitely way too slow in this matchup. Diamond might be thinking about trying to get a Grimoire. Potentially, like, Life Tap, Armor Vendor, Grimoire. To get another tap in. Maybe try and find something else to combo with Tamps and have an even bigger swing turn. Yeah, that's possible. But is just going to go with this line. Healing 8. Yeah, I don't think you need to get too greedy with your your Tamsin turns. I think just healing for 8 and removing 4 power off the board is pretty good. Yeah, and especially with a raised dead in hand right now. If you want it back, you can get it. Nightshade Matron, huge pickup here. Yeah, that uh, probably the best top deck you could have gotten. <laughs> yeah. Likely just going to combo this with a armor vendor. Yeah, I like taking the the uh, the bump in here as well. Yeah, divine shields are really tricky for warlock to remove. So getting rid of that now is good. So Skirt's opting to still try and protect this anomaly and stay on board rather than play Barak and just draw your burn. Not close enough to burning Diamond out right now. Yeah, the piercing shot does, uh, you know, do a pretty efficient job of removing that 5-3. Mm -hmm. It does, now that both piercing shots are gone now, it does kind of make, you know, a bristleback sticking on board a little bit more dangerous. Yeah, that's true. I wonder if he goes for a raised dead Tamsin here. It does seem pretty strong. You will be able to remove both minions and proc your quest. Yeah, it's not guaranteed though because we have another armor vendor, Matron, and Tamsin. But I can't always just start with it to see what we get. Okay, he's going to go for it this way. Trying to optimize the quest ticks, not waste any. Reasonable. Does clear the board and weave in a backfire. I think at this point you just play the backfire. You have the three mana. Yeah. Although now if, uh, with Barrett Kotobane coming down this turn, there isn't actually an answer for it. You could raise dead, go for the 50-50 on the matron, and then play the matron and play Bristleback. Yeah. Well, you could just play Thalnos and coil it, and that'll put you to and ten have... cards, right? Oh, wait, right, the Thalnos will draw as well. Okay. So, okay, so you do have a guaranteed way of getting the bristle back off. Yeah, so even if this adorable comes down, we'll still be able to clear it with the bristle back. Yeah, it did get a uh, quick shot aim shot off the, the Barrett Cotobane, which I think is what you're looking for. It's not super likely that this board's going to stick for you. Yeah, this one in the game, you're really not wanting to find those ramming mounts. At least compared to aim oh, shot. Okay, the, wow, Tamsin pickup's pretty huge. Yeah, that's massive. We can heal a ton with this. We can stay out of range from dying, and then we'll have the Bristol back for the next turn as well. Sign to tap to complete the quest stage. And then just healing up for six. Yeah, I think I might have gone for a coil instead to take the 1-1 one, one off board. Yeah, if we go for the coil, we get another one in hand, and then we can also play the armor vendor. Um, 
I think the Rhino is going to clear it off no matter what, but mm -hmm. now you have maybe an option to play Biscuit on the 1-1 one -one instead and make the clears a bit more challenging. Yep. Well, with Diamond's natural draw here, he will be at 10 cards in deck, so Bristleback will be able to clear this off. Yeah, and this is kind of where the matchup becomes really tough to win for the Hunter. Yeah, especially finding a perfect opportunity to get the Rod online. Diamond just has so much life gain in his deck at this point. Armor Vendor Drain Souls, or Drain Soul Bristleback. Also still has Moarg to combo with Lifesteal. Yeah, I guess he's not completely out of the woods yet. You know, he's at 15, and, you know, the quick shot will kind of keep Skirt's resources going a bit. Yeah. I think if Skirt goes for the Wound Bray. I think the fact that Skirt doesn't have Moonfang in the list makes it a lot tougher. I find that, at least in my experience playing against Quest Warlock, that's a card that really comes in clutch a lot of the time, especially if you're able to buff it. Yeah, that's really hard for the Warlock to remove. Well, Moarg is a card that does help remove Moonfangs, but none here. Yeah, Diamond can just get deeper in his deck. He has the Grimoire already in hand to clear this board up, comboed with an Armor Vendor to gain more HP. And it'll all be zero mana if we play this Backfire. Yeah, I think now you can just play out whatever you want in your hand, and it <laughs> it doesn't make too much of a difference, you know? Yeah. You, know, you do still have to manage your resources a little bit and not, you know, waste everything, but I think Diamond's quite comfortable in this position now. Yeah. I also like getting this bristle back on board. Okay, Diamond, don't tap. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think all he has to do is not play Life Tap before playing his cards, and he's fine. Now can Life Tap. Oh, okay. Cleanly nice. complete quest. Clear off the board. Add 20 HP with a Lifesteal minion hand. With infinite healing in hand. This game is definitely looking pretty rough for Skirt. Yeah, having to play, you know, quick shot and aim shot on like both of the both of the bristlebacks is pretty sad. Yeah. Did take the explosive trap there. I mean, <laughs> that's the only decent one I think out of the options. Yep. I mean, at this point, Diamond never needs to even attack face. Yeah, he could just. He could honestly probably just bristle back his own minion here if he wanted to be insanely safe. I don't even think there is uh, a possible lethal from Skirt. Although, there's... Okay, if he attacks in, there is second quick shot, second aim shot now. Yeah. But he's going like to play the bristle heal. back and heal up anyways. So. Yeah, smartly done. Yeah, at this point you're pretty safe. Yeah, I think it is, you know, important to note that this is this is a five seed game we're seeing here, and I think both sides have played pretty exceptionally well. Yeah, I agree. This has been really clean play. Yeah, you know, I think draft series the five seed. Like, or at least the seeding of all the players in draft series has been, you know, a good chunk above, you know, the average level you would see in, you know, like a legacy or a hero series. Definitely agree, yeah. Yeah, no, I think the the, the level of play, at least at least from the games I've seen, have been have been really really good. For sure, and that's gonna do it for this game.
There's pretty much no way Script can come back at this point. Diamond just attacking face, <laughs> getting the explosive trap damage sent right back in Script's <laughs> face. Yeah. Explosive not too great when uh, <laughs> your opponent's played the Tamps. And, and Diamond's just going to heal the full. And we'll kill Skirt with his natural draw next turn. Yep. So Diamond ties up the series. We have Liberum Paladin, Aggro Druid for Diamond versus the Face Hunter and Pirate Warrior for Skirt. Yeah, it might be a bit tough to get the Warrior through now that I'm thinking about it, right? It's kind of not great into Paladin or the Token Druid. And also Skirt's... Um, Warrior doesn't have Rancor or man the cannons, so it's going to have a much harder time into Druid than, than some other Warrior list you'd see. Yeah, he has a very aggressive list that's cut pretty much all the removal except for a single copy of um, Lord Barov. So yeah, at this point, I believe Diamond has just strictly favorables left with all his decks. Yeah, although I think, like we've mentioned, um, some of these aggro druid matchups are are a lot closer than they used to be. Yeah, definitely. They're not favored by much. Most of these are close to 50-50. Yeah, I think the hunters specifically with, you know, this lower end wound prey list is is not not even, I don't think, but it is it is close. I think maybe... Maybe it's only like 55% for the Druid, as opposed to, you know, it used to be maybe above 60. Yeah, you can snowball really fast as a hunter. Let's see if Diamond chooses to keep a curve here. We see Skirt already has the Intrepid Initiate, which alongside a potential buff, um, especially on the play, is going to be pretty lethal. Yeah, I mean, both sides sort of getting the hand they're looking for. Diamond obviously looking for that Razor Maid Battle Guard to go alongside these taunts. Yeah, exactly. I think, I wonder if we're going to see a brawler here. Or, oh, okay, he's going to go for the, the Druid of the Reef and just rush it in immediately. Yep. Skirt does have a, a really strong answer for this, though. This anomaly is not going to be able to be answered immediately. And, I mean, we can see that this ramming mount's also going to just get a perfect value trade into the brawler next turn. Yeah, this ramming mount is going to be pretty brutal for Diamond. I wonder which one you play it on, because if you play it onto the Anomaly, it, it plays a, around Park Panther much better. Yeah. Um, but it also leaves you with, you know, just a one health token that doesn't trade that well into most things. And you're also pushing less damage face this turn. Yeah, having two threats here is pretty oh. good. Spectator Mule coming in potentially. <laughs> oh, dodged. Dodged for now. Without a huge swing here from Diamond, it's going to be tough to come back from this board. These anomalies, uh, or this anomaly, is just going to keep snowballing, and the ramming mount, we're not been taking any damage on our minions. Yeah, I'm And the matchup is just minion base it's gonna be tough i'm curious as to what skirt goes for here i think the anomaly plus demon companion is actually better yeah i agree 
I think piercing shot, um, saving that for an oracle balloon that is behind a taunt is maybe better. I think this is um, maybe a bit of an oversight from Skirt because, you know, if Park Panther were to come down here, this is that's a way that Diamond could really come back into the game and start swinging it. Yeah. Okay, time to leave spectator. <laughs> Are you thanking him, Neji? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, Skirt picked up the adorable infestation off the top. Yeah, at this point for Diamond, there's really, I'd say, Oracle plus Battle Guard plus 5-drop taunt is one of your only ways to come back. Or just skirt bricking for multiple draws. Uh, it's it's hard to say. Like Even if skirt bricks, right, did, his board can just immediately answer everything that Diamond has. has. So it's hard to say, like... Yeah. 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 How do you even... The bricks know, would have to be... Even... Also, diamond drawing perfectly into. Uh, I don't even know what he could find here, actually. The hyena with ramming mounts just gonna take a value trade into this five three. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe there was a better way to set up your board because this seemed like it didn't do anything. Yeah, and with that draw from skirt, there's just no coming back. If the streamers see, uh, or our viewers see Diamond's face, it's, it's he's pretty much just saying, okay, just, just go. Yeah, Diamond <laughs> is... Move on to the next one. Yeah. Diamond looking a bit exasperated. Skirt, stoic as ever, um, as which he always is as far as I've seen him on stream. Yeah, I think Skirt's someone who doesn't really seem to get phased much by, you know, the state of the game and how it's going, I think he's he's a player that really just yeah you know, stays pretty cool under pressure uh, from what I've seen. Yeah, it seems that way, which is definitely important. Yeah, for a for game sure. with a lot of draw RNG and just RNG in general. Yeah, I remember like in. When he played his Hero Finals match on stream, he got... I think he was holding Battle Guard and Oracle Balloon in his hand for a few turns. And he got the taunt in his hand like one turn late. And I think uh, I think the rest of the team, were we were in column. We were like, oh, I think all of us were saying like, oh, we would have had some sort of reaction. But his skirt did not budge at all. <laughs> Even though it was, it was... I don't know, I would have been tilted. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he... He really does not react. But yeah, Park Panther here. Would have been good a couple of turns ago, but yeah, here it's just far too late. Yeah, there was really not much Diamond could have done in this matchup. The Ramming Mount is a card that can just completely solo this deck. And without a huge swing turn with Oracle, there was never a chance to get back on board. Yeah, I think maybe, I don't know, maybe the mulligan keeps could have been a bit different. You know, if you know Wound Praise in the deck, how how good really is Peasant? Well played. But yeah. Was was Peasant in his opening hand? Um, I think oh, he mulligan sure he didn't do it. it. Okay. I think he kept the Bone Jewer Brawler and the Druid of the Reef. Okay. But he did toss back an Oracle of a Loon, which would have helped a bit in this matchup, but we didn't find the Battle Guard, so wouldn't actually have had much of an impact. Yeah. 
there's maybe the idea that you could save a loon for a druid of the reef board swing with the rushers. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's that's a you know turn three coin play, and you pretty much need to be fighting for board on turns one and two. So keeping two cards that don't like with the plan of not doing that is maybe not a winning line either. Yeah, I think it was fine to toss it back. Yeah. So now we're seeing the Quest Warrior into the Libram Paladin, which is, you know, another matchup that should be heavily favored for Diamond. But, you know, the Warrior does have some some game into it. Um, I think the Neophyte could be pretty useful in this matchup, especially given Diamond's hand if he elects to keep any of it. Yeah, for sure. If the Warrior can have a strong opening... Um... It's not too hard just to roll over the Paladin. But if the game goes a little bit longer, the Paladin starts to build up those Librum of Hopes and Liadrin's buffs, and it just gets really tough. Yeah, I think, you know, um, we talked about how the rank, like the loss of Rancor or AoE is, you know, pretty bad into Druid, but I think it actually helps the Paladin matchup because they're not really going too wide most of the time. Mm -hmm. And something like a Cult in the fight could actually delay a Librum of Hope, which uh, I think is a lot more relevant. Yeah, for sure. I think Skirt's Warrior List gives him the best chance against Paladin out of pretty much every Warrior List. Maybe a Mutinous or something would help eat a Lehadron or something, but... Yeah, you could go back to the old um, you know, Quest Control Warrior that we saw kind of before the mini set with Mutinous and you know, sometimes we saw a Shadow Hunter Bulgin as a Paladin tech as well. Yeah. Or I guess also as, you know, a, so, somewhat of an anti DH tech. But um, I think if you're going for the the aggro warrior archetype, and I think maybe Neophyte is one of the better options you have. Uh, really? It's not too heavy. Yeah. Crab Rider is a really nice pickup, especially being buffed. Wow. As a one four has doesn't have much impact, but yeah, luckily skirt gets um a two drop to play on this turn because I think that keeping the sword eater in hand in his opener with almost came back to bite him. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Now you can just set up the weapon, swing face with it, set up a, a two drop. Yeah, there aren't too many options here. I don't think you want to be burning your shiver uh, quite yet. Yeah, a little bit annoying for Skirt because he has so many weapon charges in the cards in his hand. Uh, yeah. All, that's also the the whetstone hatchet is the only weapon in his deck. He only runs it as a one of, so he will not be drawing uh, a weapon off of the first quest proc. Yeah, that's actually a big deal. Being an extra card down here, coming off of uh, next turn. Yeah, I, I think tr I also think trading was was the right idea there. I think it's just maybe a little bit too risky to not trade. Yeah, I agree. Oh, he did hit both of the the Whetstone Hatchet buffs on that left side Sword Eater, so it's now yeah, four five a big one. Instead. Yep, and like you said, not going to be getting anything off this quest, Brock. And Diamond's going to come in with a huge Aldor Truth Seeker. So that Shiver that Skirt decided to keep earlier is definitely going to help him out here. Yeah, he is going to be able to clear it off pretty much perfectly with the Shiver and the Weapon Swing, and gets to play the other Sword Eater, re-equip the weapon. Yeah, we'll see if he goes for the Sword Eater to be mana efficient, or just plays South Sea Captain to try and keep an extra weapon charge.
Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I would make, prefer Sword Eater a little bit, but I can definitely understand the wanting to play Captain as well. Yeah, both seem fine. I definitely would not play Neophyte here. You want to be playing that next turn, because the Limerophilp costs 7 mana right now. So yeah. going into Diamond's turn 7, you want to be disrupting. Well, with a 5-6 Devote Pupil and the 0 mana Librem, we will be able to full clear here with the Broom. Yeah, this is a pretty clean clear here. I think, yeah, I guess the only issue now is that you're kind of out of minions to play if this gets cleared off. Yeah, your hand is a lot of dead removal right now because you are ahead. But if uh, Skirt goes for, like, Harbor Scamp into another 2-drop plus Neophyte or something, you will have a clear yeah, with it does uh, get the, does get the cannon proc here. Uh, not the worst outcome, I guess. Definitely yeah. prefer to have a cannon shot, not hit face. At this point, the Cult Neophyte isn't really disrupting much because the Limerick Philip costs 6 mana. Maybe. So it doesn't need to be a priority this turn. Uh, with Skirt's hand, it really doesn't have a lot of ways to remove minions. I wouldn't even mind swinging in your weapon here and then re-equipping with Sword Eater to already start chunking out the 6-7. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a tough decision. It's time to get an armor up in. And does swing anyways. Bannerman's a huge draw here. Yeah, yeah that's kinda, uh, massive. Drawing into the hard punish there of being able to play Samuro if you want to. Yeah. I like using the Liver of Justice here. We get to save the Samuro Justice combo, whereas having two Justices in hand is pretty useless, um, currently at least. Yeah, although, like, I guess there there still is the the bear off potential that you could lose board. Well, this is pretty sad. <laughs> yeah, that's really tough. Not getting a card off of the anchor man, and Dama's just gonna be able to load up this Lady Liadrin. I think you just keep pressuring. You liberal of wisdom. You play Lady Liadrin. Yeah, and just smack skirt. It's not lethal, but it is close. I think you're going to get, I don't know, three or four Wisdoms off of Liadrin here. Yeah. Taking it slow, getting a bit more value off the Liadrin. Maybe... Okay. <laughs> oh, missed a <Mr>. buff. <laughs> that was a little bit of a mistake. I also think, yeah, I also think there's not really any downside to going for... Liadrin that turn. I mean, I guess you miss on miss out on getting Noble Mount back in your hand, but you put way, way more stats on board that turn. Yeah, I would have liked to see the Liadrin, but it is going to get a lot uh, next turn as well. Skirt will be able to live for now. Um, I think with... Is it lethal with justice? Um, yes. Yeah, it is lethal. He's gonna... Yeah, he's gonna get at least three lip... Oh, okay. And, I yeah, think he had three or four, so yeah. 
Yeah, so this is just gonna do it with justice. So Diamond's gonna tie up the series. Oh, we had six of them. He had a lot. Well Definitely dead. Well, that's gonna tie up the series again and bring us to a game five where we have still the warrior for skirt and what was it? what was Diamond's last? Oh, the token. Uh, Agar Druid, yeah. Yeah, and then on paper that should be much better for Diamond, especially with uh, with the cult neophytes in Skirt's deck. Yeah, not having Rancors in this matchup is going to be really, really rough. There's not really many comeback mechanics in the Warrior. Besides the Lord Barov, there really isn't anything. If you get snowballed out of the game, it's yeah, going to be Skirt tough. Yeah, does have the Harper Scamp, which is, you know, the best two-drop in the deck. So that could, you know, help him out to some extent. Yeah, does draw that weapon again, so not going to get anything off the quest proc. But the weapon is also useful for clearing one health minions early in the game. Still would rather be in the deck, though. Squirrel does contest the two drops coming down here nicely. Even if it was a Blood Sail Raider, we have the Druid of the Reef or the Adorable to clear it off. Yeah, I think despite the Weststone Hatchet clearing up the Squirrel pretty nicely, it, it does really mess up your curve. Yeah, I really you're don't. Not able think to get your quest online to. as quickly. This uh, Oracle balloon though is going to be pretty tough to answer. Yeah, without a shiver off the top, Skirt is not going to be able to clear this minion, and it's going to get a lot of value. Could either go for the Harvest Camp or the Blood Sail here. Blood Sail puts more stats on the board, which is honestly what you need right now. Yeah, yeah, maybe Blood Sail Raider is a bit better. Yeah, I like swinging for sure here. Just chipping away at the minions. No point in pushing face at all right now. First priority is coming back on the board. Very likely going to see the Rush Druid of the Reef here clean up the board. Um, I think a... Oh, that is oh, a wow. good pickup. Yeah, it's that's not big. amazing because this Oracle Balloon is probably still alive. Yeah, you have to get some really good hits. Double... I wonder I if you ever want to save it for next turn. So many. You could and just play the captain here instead. Maybe. As a 4-3. If you it is gonna get cleared up by, you know, double adorable onto the Anoyotron that you don't swing into. This is just so much health to try and get through regardless. It just does seem, like, I don't know, at least to me, it seems kind of tough to to actually do anything with this, this yeah. here on this turn. It's going to be t even tougher next turn with more things on board. 
Diamond doesn't actually have a great way to utilize the Oracle besides the Cubs off or adorable, but setting up for a turn five Arbor up with a full board is lethal. <laughs> Yeah, this does go pretty wide here. Cannoneer is going to proc the quest. We're gonna need more and the Neophyte will actually prevent the Arbor of this turn. Wow, that is, that is tragic. That is not what you want to see. If we don't double hit the Oracle here, uh, nope. That is sad. Yeah, preventing the arbor up's not bad. The fact that two of the cannon, two of the four cannon shots went face is pretty brutal for Skirt. Definitely. That's... And now we can just go wide on the board again because there is no rancor, there's no cannon shots. Yep. I like utilizing these now. They get a lot worse later when the Oracle dies. And it sets up for the big arbor. I think a lot of people have been te tempted by Teacher's Pet Bear, but I think this is a smarter play. Yeah, I, I agree as well. I think uh, getting value out of your smaller minions when they do get value is, uh, is a much better play. Skirt is going to be able to get Rakara in hand, though. But with an Arbor up coming down... How much damage is this? It's 9 plus... He is 10. dead. He is just dead, yeah. He is dead. Yeah, yeah. and no matter what Skirt does here, he's just dead and the game's over. What's, what, um, I guess he could hero power. <laughs> what's Diamond crossing his fingers for? <laughs> Um, I'm not sure. Good luck. <laughs> He's crossing his fingers for the generated man the cannons. <laughs> off of, I I don't know, venomous scorpid that he generated off of something. Off of running an illegal deck list, maybe. There you go. Dom's gonna find out that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. The hero power does. Make yeah, it one off. <laughs> it actually does. So he's a. I mean, I don't really see <laughs> what it it's, does. Yeah, it's just delaying the inevitable at this point. Like, I don't think there's a single card in Skirt's deck that can save him. Yeah. So I think Diamond would have liked to potentially trade. A 1-1 one, one into the 3-1, one, and then buff another 1-1. One, one. Maybe is why he's emoting it. But oh, yeah. at this point, it's it does not matter. Yeah, There's I mean, no you could, even, you could even argue that just getting the face damage as opposed to, to trading in like that is better anyways. Yeah, I think honestly it was. But looking at Skirt's list, there was no card that saved him here. Just yeah. had to hope that there was no Arbor up, pretty much. Yeah, and I think, you know, maybe a couple of people have been a little bit baited by this Zhaoti warrior list, just because it did win a Masters Tour. Um, and I think it was mm -hmm. good into the field that it played into. Um, you know, lots of lots of uh, quest DHs, lots of Garot Rogues, and that sort of thing. But may, maybe into, uh, I'd say the draft series is definitely a different field than what you would expect in a Masters Tour. Yeah. Uh, in terms of in terms of the decks that are brought, so I think maybe just using a deck list that did well in one format doesn't really translate to another. Yeah, for sure. 
So you guys ready for uh, the winner's interview? Let's bring him in. <laughs> I don't know what his name is offhand, but uh, we'll, we'll find out. Hello, sir. Hello. You owe five dollars for for winning tonight. Oh, Canadian, I of course. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Coming back from the one two and able to win it in the end. I mean you said not to end, so I, I did tell you not to end. <laughs> so I had to win. But I'm pretty yeah. sure with this result too, doesn't uh Turtles team make it anyways? Okay. Um they had let's see. I'm not sure it does. Uh, they're at 47, so they'd be at 49 now, and then we're at 58. So, I think... They are tied for the wild card right now with Chicken's team. Ooh. So oh, I'm not sure what how, do, how do we break that tie? Yeah, you guys haven't played each other, so I'm not sure what the tiebreaker actually is there. Oh, that's interesting. Tied? Okay. Well, I'm sure. Oh I'm wait, sure no. There's a there's, will, a there's a three way tie. Oh no, sorry. Because uh, I'm sure someone will come up with a very interesting way to break the tie. <laughs> Coin <Let's>, flip. Yeah. <laughs> we'll play tug team multiplication. Yeah. Um. I guess on the match, or I guess on the this week so far, did you did you expect a lot of uh, I guess warrior and hunter going into this week, and it, did that kind of play into what you brought for your lineup? Yeah, in general, I find that Warrior and Hunter round up, like, most lineups, like, especially in the top level, and I assume, like, in the lower seats, people tend to go for Edgar anyways, so I didn't go, like, a mile for a full counter lineup, but I was, like, I played the decks I liked, and I was actually surprised of the DH ban, like, I was expecting Warlock, but Skirt may have banned DH, because Turtle or someone on their team might know that I really like playing Fel DH, so that was interesting, but yeah, I just kind of brought the decks I like, and they played into that strategy, which I did most of the hero season. So that was nice. Yeah, it was a pretty clean series overall. I think both of you played really well. And both me and Chicken were impressed by the level of play. See, the five seed ain't all <laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we all Chicken start was people who shouldn't be in the five seed, arguably. <laughs> yeah, that's just what Chicken was saying earlier. It's just the level of play right now in the draft series is just a bit above in every seed what you expect in a standard THL series. Yeah, as we saw from the draft, Donde ended up in the five seed <laughs> and did end up uh, sweeping his matches. Um, well, get it, like winning all of his matches, that is. Um, but yeah. It, it's nice now that Donde can win in the seed he's not supposed to be in. So if true. He, <laughs> if, if he had a losing record, I don't know how well that would have looked on him. Any anybody can be beaten <laughs> any time, man. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> true. But at uh, at four hundred, close to four hundred PR. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't. Yep, there wasn't many things we were questioning. The only thing that I think we both or both Chicken and I agreed on was potentially playing the Liadra in that turn instead of the Noble Mount plus Hero Power just to get more immediate stats. I was just well over that turn. I was th I was first of all counting if Liadra was lethal, which I think it wasn't looking back. But I, at that point, I was like, all right, if he plays a Taunt, I can just set up lethal as long as my minion lives. Because uh, the most interesting part I found about that warrior, because it's the aggro variant, was there's no rancor or anything, so it's only really bear of plus shiver or pirate, and that like was for both games. I'm like, okay, he doesn't have bear of, so <laughs> we're just gonna keep trucking along. Yeah, the matchup, especially against the druid, is way way tougher without having the access to rancor. The whole game, it's just playing around bear of. It's the only comeback mechanic he has, so. I think yeah. you played it well. Both of you did. Yeah, Warrior definitely, I mean, struggled a lot in this match. And it's also kind of struggled a lot in general in uh, the draft series, having about just under a 46% win rate overall. Uh, despite bre being the class that has the most uh, games played. 
Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if it's coming down to potentially lists. I don't know what people have been running. We were talking that um, the list that Skirt had with the Neophytes and the Private Ratcheteers was the Zhao T list and was stronger into the MT field than kind of what we expected for the draft series, especially with not having the Rancors. So maybe it's just the lists aren't getting there, or maybe Warrior's just not that strong. It, it could be a thing as well that people expect Warrior to be lineups, because I think the big ones are like, like DH in general. It's like, I think that was also brought a lot of people expect, but you can't really target DH as well as like something like Warrior, I guess. I think overall all my decks are like fine, besides actually the deck that was banned, which is Fell DH. So yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, Warriors Bring Marate, yeah, it could be due to the popularity of Demon Hunter because it is such a good counter. And then if your opponent doesn't have Demon Hunter, well, it's a little bit awkward. There we go. Officially submitted the results. So I think there's, what, a bunch of points still. It's F12 Silver could make yeah, it. Just... And I think that's it. Or maybe a, a, a very brushy tuna Thanksgiving can also sneak in, because I can go up to 49 points. Yeah, it looks like uh, the not entirely Justin's team could technically win Group 1 over F12 Silver. Um, if F12 does not get any more points and <laughs> Justin gets almost all their points from now on. But I think the standings are mostly locked up, um, from what I can tell. Yeah, I don't know what the uh, Team Justin Singular and Turdy Wordy's Poggy Wiggy's <laughs> tiebreak is going to be if it comes to that. But Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it, the tie is broken. Where is Marty V? <laughs> yeah, lots of, I I mean, <laughs> more ties than I would have expected to even need to be broken. Oh, I don't know if this there's still time, but apparently Desharmo needs an emergency sub. He can't play his final match. Max PR four four six. So if anyone out there watching can sub in, that'd be good <laughs> for Lotus. Definitely. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a great help for them. Yeah, I mean we're always trying to avoid DQs. Um, and I think, have there been any in draft series? I Not that I have heard of. I don't believe so. Maybe there might have been, like, I don't think there's any DQs. Maybe someone may have, like, miscued a class or something. Yeah. But, yeah. Damn. Yeah, it seems like everything's been running pretty smoothly so far. Despite, um, I mean, just the sheer volume of matches that everyone's had to play. Yeah, yeah I was just going to comment the... Uh... And uh, with the Thanksgiving holiday for majority of the uh, of the league, yeah. except not the majority of the people in the call. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> yeah, we got the all the all, all Canadian cast can. right now. <laughs> Damn, hey. I think wow, Lotus has an insane record. He went three zero and only lost one game. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> Impressive. And he was in the the two seed. I believe so. He was on a very brushy's tuna thing. So let's see. Draft Lotus. Yeah, he's in the two seed because 70 PR lower than based. I'd say both yeah. based and Lotus throughout <laughs> their group. Oh, God. Wow. Damn. That is pretty impressive. Maybe you guys on Heart Center will cover what goes on or like a full analysis of this week. We'll see. Yeah, there will definitely be <laughs> a lot to cover. I'm sure more than we'll be able to on the show. Yeah, there's a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I think that was most of the things I had to to cover. Anything else you wanted to add, Neji? Um, I don't think so. It was just a well played match by both players, uh, enjoyable to cast. So thanks for having the games. Yeah, thanks for being on stream there, Diamond, and and uh, thanks for reminding me that there was going to be a stream tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no I was problem. like, oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry, dude. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hey, Confirmed. Soccer, Wait a second. Hold on. The, as the caster. And he's like, 
there's no plans for a match today. And I was like, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. No, it turned out to be a terrific match, and I'm, I'm glad we got the, uh, the fantastic uh, Canadian duo, we'll call you guys. So. <laughs> The clowns. <laughs> the clowns. Hey, clown. Well, clowns. Well, but more like former. the clown. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, clown and former clown. There you go. Yeah. We'll All see right. what happens for reveals this week. That's right. Was oh, that this week? Yeah, it's coming up this week. So. Oh, it's... nice. Yeah, I'm excited for uh, that. Friday mm-hmm. and Saturday, right, soccer? Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to touch base on that one. So we got... Friday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, so 10 o'clock for for myself. But uh, we're definitely going to have uh, the Pro and the Wild Series. Nice. Uh, hitting up first, and just want to double-check who I got there. So I got one of the individuals that's on, on the call right now. So we got Nails, uh, Cyan Cheapies, Super Chicken, and uh, Jordan MG, who's handling the Wild stuff. Um, so I can't remember how many teams there, but I'll have to scroll back to what Mako said for, for captains. Um, and then we're going to have uh, a cool group there for the uh, Saturday show at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so that's going to be Legacy and Hero Series. We're going to have Yellow Dart, um, Diamond, Mojo Powell, and Geranium Battle is going to end up actually joining us there for that call as well. So Sweet. Should be some fun, like always. And... The Wheel of Doom will have to come out for for certain series, as well as uh, getting the 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 panel's uh, top five, which is always interesting conversation. So, but, uh, any any final words, guys, before we we sign off for the evening? Uh, not really. Thanks, obviously, Neji and Chicken stepping up the cast. Appreciate it, yeah. Saku for opping, and then shouts to Skirt as well for playing on stream. I think yeah, this was a series to have on stream, and it was a good one. I know. Definitely. Yeah, well, congrats on your win. Good luck in playoffs. Thank you, thank you. All right. But that does it. Yeah, I got to figure out how this tiebreaker works. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, keep, keep in chat. Keep bugging Marty till it's 3 o'clock in the morning his time, which is probably right about now. Just ping him to death. Oh, true, yeah. So, <laughs> so but we'll catch everybody at the end of the week. Have a safe uh, and good week. Take care, everybody. Bye.